Cadius McFarlane, and I'm a hovercraft enthusiast. What got you into hovercrafting? Uh, you know, I was really, I was just tired of waiting for losers at the boat ramp. So I wanted to get something versatile that the ladies dig, you know, pop it off the trailer and just rip down the boat ramp, blow by all those peasants trying to back their freaking boats up. Their wives are yelling at them while they're doing nothing and the guy can't back up a trailer. Said, screw that, I'm buying a freaking hovercraft. Yeah, you know, I had a real bad problem taking out propellers. I had hit everything under the sun you can think of. Rocks, buoys, jet skis, seagulls, you b believe it or not. I just couldn't keep a propeller under a boat, so I knew it wasn't for me. The right away for a jet ski or a hovercraft? Obviously a hovercraft. It's a freaking aircraft. I feel like aircrafts have the right away at all times. It's basically an airplane, that's a nice thing. What can the water police even say? Am I on the water? Am I in the water? They don't even know. Nobody actually knows. Hasn't even been scientifically proven. You know, I'd say about 5% of the viewers on my channel are there for the race car stuff. Uh, the other 95% are there for the hovercrafting, for sure. It's a big hit. It's a big hit. Yeah, there's no no doubt about that. Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fun YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you the new and improved scat you know you guys knew this thing back when i bought it feels like i've had it my whole life but you know maybe a year ago and it had maybe maybe a measly 20 horsepower it was down on power you know i'm not sure if she was ever full power i did just find out today that it had the wrong fan on it but today she's back we basically doubled the engine size where it's, it's got a two cylinder now and uh right here we have alan and kevin and kevin used to be the chief engineer of scat hovercraft so these guys reached out to me on email when i first picked up the scat i told them i was like man it's just so underpowered i couldn't even make it through this long grass over here so he's like man you gotta let us get our hands on that thing and they got it we have a rotax 503 on this puppy now and then in addition to mine being here they brought a racing hovercraft which they're going to show us all about but i think first things first is uh we should probably go over all the upgrades that you guys did to this thing right sure right. Kevin, good to meet you nice to meet nice you nice to meet you alan good thanks for you. all the help man so what do we got going here i see we got radiators now yeah, we got radiators because it's a liquid cooled it's a it's a rotax 532 we actually found 532 it on, on the original uh, uh new old stock yep. 532 that's from uh 1987. <laughs> And, uh, that's perfect still, still in the box and it's an 87 craft so yep. now it's matching numbers yeah that's nice hey and what years did you work at scat i worked at scat from 1986 uh, to 1991. wow so and you that was the full years they produced in that time we produced about 6500 hovercraft 6500 and you actually designed these right right they they had an original version called the scat one that was belt drive that came from england and they were having all kinds of mechanical problems yep. with that so after they hired me one of my first responsibilities was to was to make it reliable yeah and uh at that time rotax was already selling engines with gearboxes on them and they were scott was actually paying rotax to take the gearbox off of the motor and put it on the hovercraft <laughs> and then put a belt drive on so we just went to the gearbox motors on, on the scats and changed the body style and uh Dude, they're so sleek yeah i and, love it uh, and and dressed it all up and uh, yeah. made it a lot safe so over time after we got those into production and then we got involved in the hover club of america and found out that they had racing so of course i was all about that so I absolutely the manager of the factory race team and over time we just kept putting more and more power on the craft yeah until we got to the most power you could buy. And then we started modifying the hulls to make them lighter. And the, we started, mod whatever we it. had problems with, we just started modifying. It's exactly how drag racing works for us. It was exactly the same way. <laughs> we, and you know, we'd bring them to the race cra uh, racetrack and they'd say, you can't race with a scat. And then we'd qualify first and beat them. And then they were just like, wow, no way. you can race a scat. And your scat over there, which we'll show in a second, has like over 100 horsepower. Yeah, that's 110 horsepower. And this is now? This is 64 horsepower. 64 horsepower. That's pretty beefy. I know you guys rode it right when you got it. I mean, it had to have been making 15 or 20 horsepower. It was it was weak. Well, and, and it had other issues, too. This aluminum strip that holds the skirts on around the perimeter. Yeah. The rivets were all rotten out, and it was popped loose, so it was leaking air around the perimeter. So that's oh, one of the frick. reasons why it wouldn't. 
you know, handle the grass. I didn't even know about that. So, yeah, we, we took it all apart and fixed everything we found that was bad. Yep. New engine frame to handle the additional weight and additional power. Oh, nice, uh, clean. Bigger motor mounts up here from uh, the 5 16th to the 3 8 motor mounts all around. These brackets, these safety brackets on the front yeah. so that if one of these motor mounts fail, the engine still can't come forward. That is sweet. Lots of safety enhancements. The things yeah. that we had learned over time in racing. Yeah, and then Alan was saying that that is the fan that should be on the bigger engine, but I had the smaller engine prior, so it was kind of holding right. it back yeah, it was a, it was a this was a waste because you know up to a certain horsepower six evenly spaced blades uh uh produces better thrust okay then but when you get over a certain horsepower uh you go down from the 12 bladed hub with the six blades in it which is what came stock to the nine bladed hub with six okay. blades in it because you need that extra flow area for the horse gotcha That's and we also crazy. um uh, replace the fan guard with a two inch mesh fan guard. Your original one had nice. one inch mesh. Nice. Which which was good for 26 horsepower, but it wouldn't allow enough airflow when you upgraded it to 64. That's crazy. So uh, nice, man. So I see we're we're getting serious now. We got dual carbs up there. Yep, dual carbs, um, and and liquid cooled. Yeah, oh, radiators, yeah, the down, radiators the down there. <laughs> That is yeah. awesome, man. You get better power to weight ratio. You guys strapped down my fuel motor. tank, too? Yeah, yeah. We didn't wow. want that sliding around all over the joint. Yeah, you know, that was kind of annoying back back when. So, uh, same skirt and everything, though. We took good care same of that. Skirt. I see you tightened up the steering, which was kind of sketchy yeah. before. And the hull is in this craft originally was camo. It was painted camo. Yeah? So what do you think, though? Overall, the hull is in pretty good shape? The hull is in immaculate condition. Oh, it's nice. like the craft had almost never been flown. Beautiful. Like it just sat for years. Nice. And somebody had taken the old engine that was all corroded and kind of cleaned it up and made it run, but the, the exhaust system was all rusted away, so it was okay. a brand new exhaust system on it. Yep. Uh, got the exhaust system back inside the hull where the scouts had them originally. Yep. So I see that. not worry about, you know, getting, getting burned. Uh, yeah. By, it's fiberglass hull. And uh, it's got a foam injected ABS outer hull and inner liner assembly. Wow. And uh, so that provides okay. the flotation. Nice. And then yours, but maybe we should go talk about yours now. Yours is way lighter, right? It's a hand laid. Yeah, it was it was hand laid with a whole lot less fiberglass in it. It's a uh, okay. It's well, been in a lot of accidents over time, and it's gained some weight from all the repairs. But, well, let's uh, go check it out, man. I'm excited. I've been kind of deprived of my hovercrafting lately, so it's good to have her back. Oh yeah, the freedom unit, man. The perfect paint scheme for this. There you go. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, the perfect paint scheme. So this is, uh, how much lighter would you say this one is than uh, mine? Originally, when it was produced, it was uh, about 100 pounds, a little less than 100 pounds lighter than that. The original SCAT came out of the factory at about 345 pounds. Okay, wow. And uh, of course, with the bigger engine, that raises it up by yeah. about 60 or 70 pounds. Yeah, this thing is freaking sweet. So, how much horsepower is this making? This is 110 horsepower. 110 horsepower. That's ridiculous. It's a 1991 MX snowmobile. Snowmobile engine. Yeah. Nice. One thing, though, I suppose we should talk about, which Alan warned me about, is the blowover in these things. If you take them up to a certain speed, they can actually. Well, there's actually a short list of, of uh, perils associated with high-performance hovercraft. Oh, really? Okay. There's only one of them. Okay. So we, we have to cover a short list of, of dangers associated with fast hovercraft. Okay. Should we take them up front and then talk about it, or sure. you want to do it right now? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, cool. Well, Alex, <laughs> how do you feel about <laughs> This is going to be sick. <laughs>
tuned up. You feel the difference? She's tuned up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it literally makes more power at idle than it used to. <laughs> I like, we were in some deep grass and I was like, do we need to pull it over? He's like, no, just try it. Drove right through it, like quarter throttle. Got a freaking tack on here now. Oh yeah, because you want to find the... Right, because what, what the fan does, the fan acts like a governor. To, yeah. To govern the engine to its peak horsepower RPM. Ah. So you want to keep tweaking the pitch until you get it right up, so it wide open throttle, you're right at your peak horsepower RPM. Well, fire me up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> lift it up and you guys can look underneath it. And take okay. a look Take a look at what the bottom looks like, okay. and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay, see those three longitudinal runners? Yep. Well, that was really great in production at 26 horsepower for protecting the bottom. Yeah. Uh, for racing and for higher speed operation on land, it's not that good. Not that good of a design. When you're going around turns, you need to lean to the inside of the turn. That does, yeah. does uh, a couple of things for you. But the main thing it does is when you're on the throttle in a turn, full throttle, a lot of the air that you're using for lift, you don't really need. Yeah. So when you lean to the inside, your excess air is diverted out the outside. Yep. And that actually provides a, an additional turning force. That air escaping out that way yep. pushes the craft the other way. The problem with these longitudinal runners is when you're sliding and it hits on the inside, it can hit, it grabs. Yeah, yeah. And then it wants to pitch you to the outside. Yeah, I almost crashed it. I've already almost had that happen. Right. Since, since the new motor or before at, at 26 horse? In the old motor. So anyway, the, the, the peril is if you go into a turn too fast, you can't go into a turn so fast that you're relying on that extra drag from the front and the extra, you know, because yeah. then you're, 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 now you're having to force that skid into the ground. And, and what'll happen is it'll bounce a couple of times. If you feel it bounce and then come back, try to, if you can, just straighten out of the turn because yeah. it'll just get worse until it eventually, and it'll roll the craft to the outside. So, you cannot back off the throttle on any hovercraft. You cannot back off the throttle while you're sliding sideways on land. Yeah, 100%. Because when it loses lift, it comes down on the skids, the skids catch, and it rolls to the outside. Okay, that's mm -hmm. bad. That's bad. bad. Oh, brother! Don't the, want to the, do that. The, Write the that down. Don't do common that. saying in hovercraft is speed is your enemy and power is your friend. Okay, so okay. just throttle down. You want to, it, you'll get used to the inertia that the hovercraft has and the momentum that it has at different speeds. Yeah. You want to be able to add power in the turn so that you have a good solid cushion. You want to keep the craft balanced yep. on its cushion. You can lean to the inside a little bit, but you don't want to lean to the inside too much. These craft are aerodynamically limited to somewhere between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Okay. Will this go 50 or 60? Absolutely. Oh, really? Um, it is, but. Sweet. This is, <laughs> when you reach the craft's point of aerodynamic instability, yeah. it wants to become an airplane. See, when the nose come up, it, it'll, because it's so tail heavy, yeah, it's gonna, it just flips oh, right under. Oh, okay, it's going to turtle. Right. All right. So, so the key to winning at hovercraft racing is you have to know when to back off. Yeah. If you back off too late, you overshoot the turn. Now you have to get way sideways, and all the people that you are keeping behind you because of your thrust, your thrust is now over there, yeah. and they've just got a clear shot to just blow you right off. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, I didn't think about that. Hovercraft racing, you got to deal with the freaking rotor wash. Absolutely. Dang. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, it's 100% about that. You don't have to have the fastest craft to win. You just that. have to get into the lead and fight to stay there. Oh, okay. And keep hmm. everybody else in your thrust. Man, I wish that was still a thing, because I would be in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it is. It is. Let's yeah, go. They are Let's sign out. Where's the next race? Just uh, join the Hover Club of America, and all the information is right there. Okay. All right. Well, guys, I'm going to have to admit, this is uh, a little spicier than I thought it was going to be, but I'm kind of happy about it. The other things that change on the water is what's called plowing. 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 I'm pretty sure I've experienced that. You, you probably have. So, the craft is, is balanced on a spherical shaped bubble of air. Yeah. Right? When you're going at high speed over the water, you want the, the nose off the ground so that the skirts aren't in contact with the water. Yep. And when that happens, there will be a mist of water coming over the bow yep. because you're actually forcing air out the front of the skirt in that air gap. Okay. If for any reason that air gap goes away at 
30 miles an hour plus, and the skirts come in contact with the water, the surface tension will pull the nose of the craft down until the hull contacts the water. And when the hull contacts the water, the craft stops. You don't. Oof. Well. So <laughs> the faster you're going, it, it either gets to the point where you get thrown into the handlebars, or you're going so fast that before you even know what happens, you're in the water. And about the time you come up, you'll feel the the, the bottom of the craft hit you in the head. Hit you in well. So maybe we should wear some helmets for yeah. the first big water. Always out. wear always wear a helmet and life jacket in the water. We got so that. what you do right. is after you tumble in the water, you put your hand up. Okay. Because then you'll feel the bottom of the craft. And as it's going by, because as a racer, you want to get back in the craft and go. Yeah. So you put your hand up, and as the craft comes by, you grab the skirt at the back. And it, now you and the craft are at the same speed. It's easy to just get right back up and jump in. Nice. Okay. Hmm. I'll be sure to remember that when I'm underwater <laughs> after my first plowing. It just gets better in yeah. <laughs> So we're going to throw some life jackets out there. We'll set up a little course. Huh? And you go play around the little course and get the feel of it. Cool. Now you're because talking. eventually you're going to have to maneuver around those freaking trees man and trees and cars and people i have learned all this the hard way there's nobody to teach me okay yeah so i, I was out I there just blessed. just busting ass until i literally busted my ass <laughs> all right so. cool well i guess let's grab some life jackets and we'll freaking all right. do this cool. garza how do you feel i'm ready to race five words uh, crew chief you gonna ride this thing garza dangerous 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 <laughs> already choked choke it even if it's already a little hot yeah if it doesn't start on the first one. Oh, wow. so much cleaner than me. Like I said, just practice. Not that hard.
<laughs> Once you hit this yeah, spot right here, it gets so dude, dirty. this spot, not a hovercraft <laughs> spot. No, 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 too many leaves. Oh, we you do your faces. <laughs> I we lost so much power because the fan guard is just full of leaves. Yeah, and also the radiator. So when the temperature Sorry gets up, by the best time I'll oh, It's oh, crazy sick. to think that it couldn't even do that with one person. Now, yeah, you're how much you weigh? Two. Two well, and you're, you know, I know <laughs> that that part where once you stop in the water, you have to get up and get going again. Yeah. It's called getting over hump. Yeah, kind of like goes over the sphere. Right. Well, what, what's happening is, obviously when you're floating in the water, you're displacing water. So yeah. the hull is sitting in a hole in the water. Well, when you come up on cushion, you're still displacing water, you're just displacing it by your air cushion. Oh, okay. So like the skirts are sitting down two inches in the water. So you're sitting a hole in the water, right? Yeah. And when you start moving, you build up a bow wave gotta get over, over those front skirts, which makes that two inches, now it's four inches. Okay. Right, so it's like you did. Instinctively, you just lean forward and goose it. Yeah, it's and, got so much and power on tap. When, when that bow wave falls away, then yeah. you're up on home. No, you see know. the lip over there on the far way over there, like where that tree roots are. I think that's too short of a jump, right? The little hump on the side. Oh, where the hump is? Yeah, yeah. that's way too vertical. <laughs> see that that cushion. We're it's gonna have to redesign this, our jump. This cushion is only a tenth of a psi. Yeah. It's very, very low pressure, but it's spread over a big area. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't have the ability to rebound you. Okay. If you hit something that sharp, the cushion's just going to collapse and the hull's just going to... Yeah. I have a friend that is like, that's so technical, he's like, a lot like you. He's like, he's, but he's like for race cars. You're right. like the Kevin Smith of hovercraft. There you go. Six hundred times better than it used to be. <laughs> Dude, it's just I used to not be able to drive down this because it would just creep down into the water and mm -hmm. there's nothing you could do. Like even if you were back fan to the water, it would just fall down in. It drives effortlessly past it now. It's nuts. It's like putting a turbo on your car. You're like twice as dirty now. Compared I know, I'm to about to jump in. <laughs> Thank Bye. you guys. This <laughs> thing oh, man. You're welcome. This you thing is it. top notch. Wow, I didn't think it could get that much better. Mm -mm. Just, that, 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 that's exactly why he emailed you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, "If you like that, yeah. How's yours? Is it good? You would love this. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. It's good. So, guys, I'll let you in on a little secret. We have plans to go to some open water on these puppies, but uh, today was like training day. We got yeah. the training wheels on. Within the next several weeks we are going to some open water and we are going to test these things out Amen. full rip hopefully not do any plow ins but more than likely there will be one <laughs> you gotta learn somehow <laughs> <laughs> so all right well 
thanks to Alan and Kevin for uh, coming out and freaking making this all happen. Thanks for watching Do It For Nail. We'll freaking see you later.